What's up, Close and Pay? Welcome to Podcast 3.0, Episode 2, I believe. Big announcement, massive announcement, but it's not a good announcement. We've been absolutely destroyed by WAP. People might have seen on Twitter. Long story short, they lied to us. Uh, we tried to move from one WAP account to the other for X, Y, Z reasons. And when they did that, they chucked everyone out of Discord. So we've got 100 people fucking complaining and we're working on it, guys. So that's all to be said. Unless, Ryan, you want to add to, to your two cents to this? No, I think you covered it. Um, I have a lot of people messaging me, like you do as well. So I've been sending people like links to manually get in. So if you got kicked out, sorry, we didn't kick you out. I apologize. We'll be back. We'll get yeah, started. DM Ryan and they'll give you a manual link. I'm trying to sort the situation out. So yeah, let's kick off by talking about extending what we did last time i think we spoke about some you know meeting people where they're at sophistication levels and i believe you uploaded some video into the group so if you want to see that video you know you can join the group we should probably do more of that on this podcast like hey if you liked what we spoke about <laughs> join the course yeah so what was the new video about yeah i posted like two in the last couple of weeks i've had a bit of downtime since i've been back from my european summer so i've just been yapping on tiktok been yapping on youtube and um, it's always interesting to see like the response to those videos because like obviously I do it in like a, I don't say controversial way, but I think it's like against the grain, like most of the stuff we talk about in terms of like what's traditionally taught in the sales space, the Jeremy Miner, Cole Goldens, whatever. So a lot of the stuff that um, I've been posting and, and people always comment on it like, oh, yeah, people buy with emotion and sell with logic. And like, first of all, if you reply to my tweets with that ever again, I'm immediately going to block you. And second of all, it's not to say that it like is completely void of emotion on any sort of sales call, sales funnel, anything. But I think I listen to a lot of sales calls and a lot of different offers. And um, people rely way too heavily on like the emotional aspects of like funnels and appointment setting and stuff like that. It's a waste of time. No one likes it. Stop doing it. And so like the videos I posted was like, hey, how you have an offer that you're selling to a market. How can you make that just fundamentally make sense and not have to try to manipulate people into buying? So it's a crazy concept. I know, but I think people should check it out. And um, I was actually talking to actually a couple setters when I was posting that video. I like to talk to people before I do it. And a lot of them were like sending me their scripts and it'd be like seven or eight questions. <laughs> and I'm like, dog, you cold call someone. You can't ask them eight questions in a row. Like that's just going to be annoying. And so a lot of times when I do that, I, I just reaffirm myself that I'm correct in those videos and what I'm saying. And um, I cannot be swayed otherwise. So do you have any thoughts? No, no thoughts. No, <laughs> I, I, uh, I do, and I think I speak about it in the course, the blurred lines between setting and closing, and because I watched, should I call them out? It's not like I'm calling them out, but I, someone on Twitter who's a part of, I can't, believe, I can't even remember who it was, but they posted example set a call, listening to it and then giving feedback like live. So I was like, oh, cool, like let me watch this. And the amount of fucking throwing the kitchen sink at the call of, of what the set was doing, like he was, and I write about this in the course, is like he was creating the gap. He was trying to create urgency. He was asking the goals. Like every tactic you can think of was in the set of call. And I was just thinking, what what the fuck does the closer do? <laughs> you, you're literally doing all of that, booking them onto another call to do the same thing. But the closer's going to just dig a bit deeper, right? It's like, yeah. what a waste of time and also revenue, giving the setter however many percent, like, cool, they make a lot of money, but you literally, as a business owner, throwing away 5% of the deal to have the same conversation twice. Yeah. A couple of things with that, too, is, like, we talked about this before um, on a podcast, and I think, like, one of my next videos about this is, like, some things just come across as, like, more superstition. Like, obviously, like, the, the company that you mentioned, like, I'm sure they do very well. I still close a lot of people. Right. But it's like, is there a lot of fluff there? And if you could strip a lot of that way, could you just close people more efficiently without creating friction and creating an opportunity for the conversation to be derailed? And something I always say in the group and I like review calls is that like you see a script, they have cost of action questions, they have situation questions, they have scarcity, they have urgency, they have creating the gap, all of these different things. Like what happens if nothing changes? And like at a certain point, having to do like 10 different things on a call is just superstition. You think that in order to close a deal, you have to do all of that. It's no different. Like people play sports, right? I played hockey growing up. And there's all these, these weird motherfuckers that before the game, they have to do a hundred different things. I think it's the same thing from a sales standpoint. You don't need 
all that's like sometimes yeah it's helpful like sometimes if you just have a conversation with someone you can like identify things like you know what they need a little kick in the ass to like actually make a change in their life and you can do that but you can't throw that at every single person or it's just going to create friction and people are going to get pissed at you exactly especially the sophisticated type of individual which just asks the question like what is the the point of a set of call right nearly always and one thing i say and i've been saying it to a few level up students at the minute is like if you have a set a call and then they close a call that's fine right but they have to be different things it has to be a progression of the deal right so like last time in the last podcast we spoke about you know a, a set a call second call and it there's something custom Right. So the person doesn't get pissed because they see progression in what they're hearing and seeing. If you can't have progression, you can't have customization. And the set of call is just, hey, do you have the money? Yeah, cool. Perfect. Like, why are you paying out setters for that? What's the yeah. point? The sophisticated person as well. Guess what? When they have the money, they get fucking pissed when you call them to check if they have money. Mm -hmm. You shoot yourself in the foot. They already have the worst bad impression of the company. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good point too. And like the one script that I posted, the way I wrote it was very specifically, it's like, do you have any questions? And like 100% of the time, they were like, oh yeah, how much does it cost? And so we have like a good way of like qualifying them then, but it's like, well, they asked for it. So it's, you kind of get away with it. Yeah. But um, yeah, I definitely agree. And the one point I made too on that is that like a lot of people will have like 10 or 15 different ways of qualifying them of like, how much money do you make? You know, how much do you save after all of your expenses? Uh, how much do you think you could hypothetically invest if all aligned? Like all these random questions. And so like the way we wrote it was like, Hey, do you have at least $20,000 to start? Okay, cool. Can I call? <laughs> and that's like, it's all it really is. It's all it really matters. Um, and the other thing you said too, which made me remember one of the conversations I had before I posted that video was someone was like, yeah, like obviously for B2C biz ops, like some of the stuff is slightly different. That's why I put a disclaimer in the video. I don't know what you sell. You might have to make adjustments, but like, here's the core idea. And um, someone commented too, is like a lot of the shit like you and I both sell, like it's always been to higher level people, people with money, more sophisticated people, like savvy A type guys. And so it's like, you don't deal with like hyper emotional people all the time. And so that's where a lot of like these strategies come from. But I still think you can apply that across the board. Even if you're selling a biz off, it's like, hey, this is the most like direct way to sell to an actual intelligent, savvy person with money. And so maybe you can add in and adjust a couple of things if you sell to complete beginners and maybe have to do have to tie in a little bit of emotion to it. But I still think it's a good place to start with like bare minimum of what's required and then build on a couple of things as opposed to throw the kitchen sink at everyone. And it just turns into being a superstition then. Yeah. Although like... I, I hardly ever buy into this. Oh, you, you speak to ultra sophisticated people with money all the time. Like, fuck you, man. You have no idea. You literally have no idea. You just get this impression. The same way everyone talks about <clears throat> close and pay. Yeah, it's the best B2B, but it's only, it's really good for B2B. Hey, guess what? I've literally only sold B2C. Where am I wrong? That is a good point. I said to someone yesterday, like, oh, you guys only sell B2B. I'm like, well, technically it's all B2C for the most part. Like, oh. unless you're selling to like a specific business archetype, like we just sell shit. It doesn't fucking matter. B2B, B2C. It, like, I hate this whole, like, you can't do close and paid stuff on B2C. Yeah. Fuck you. I sold nearly always B2C. I've only done a few bits of B2B. Guess why? And I, this is again in the course. So buy the course and you'll fucking like <laughs> light bulb moment. But like, it's not B2B versus B2C. It's my methods, close and pay methods are found, like the principles are what work. It's not B2B versus B2C. It's like, I am just insanely direct and people just go, oh shit, he is not fucking around. And like, builds trust that way, right? Yeah. If you listen to all my old calls as well, I, I, I do some of these emotional stuff and i had all some i don't throw the kitchen at it right but i apply what's needed at the right time but fuck this whole b2c shit i hate it yeah a good example of that too is like even on like the pr offer um it was like like social media management pr whatever instagram growth like half the people i talked to were women they're like instagram models 
<laughs> and like that is a more like if you're selling to women in that context, like it's a bit more of like an emotional, like empathetic sell, but it's still like the same principle, right? And so I always just kind of make that distinction too. I think that if you're predominantly speaking to older guys, like with money, you could be a bit more direct with it. And maybe I just have people in my ear saying, oh, I sell a biz off. How do I do it? It's like, well, it's the same thing, right? You could just maybe apply, like you said, a little bit more like empathy, emotion, questions, and just kind of like cater to people's personality types a bit better. As opposed to being like, oh shit, this is B2B. Oh shit, this is B2C. And having like some crazy distinct difference. So that's not the case. Yeah. Yeah, it's just that. If anything though, it's, it's, it's more a relation to the person you're speaking to, right? So like, I found it hard in the past. Not that I can't fucking close people. But like, I found it hard speaking to younger folk. Like, if you're 20, 21, whatever. I'm like, I can't relate to you much and I'm trying to sell. Whereas I can speak to someone 28 and above and they'll just immediately go, I can see it. They'll think, oh, like he's obviously intelligent. He knows his shit. Whereas the younger guy doesn't. And I'm trying to like, he's saying words I don't fucking understand, like some slang in the US. I'm like, bro, I am fucking got slang. Yeah, just stop. Like, let's let's end it here. I'll pass you on to another closer. Might as well. Yeah, it's a good point too. I remember we had this thing for a while. It was um like each closer would have like the archetype in which they wanted to be like set with or something. And it was like you didn't want like younger people or whatever. And like everyone had like, oh, I like speaking to people in this industry. Like, I think we had like someone who was in real estate as a closer, and so anyone in the real estate niche would go to them because they could have the trust, respect, the, the industry knowledge and stuff like that. I think by default, I got like Instagram models or something. It was, it was kind of weird. But um, yeah, it's a good point too. It's like if you have trouble like selling to that type of person, it's just more difficult for you. Not even like as a sales standpoint, it's just like communication, human to human. Like I don't want to talk to some fucking like 19 year old bro kid. You know what I mean? Like that's just not how I want to be selling. Yeah. And it makes you want to shoot yourself in the face as well. So yeah. Yeah. I, I close a bunch of Instagram models bunch of them i close a bunch of older folk wi women boss boss chicks and shit yeah we have a call in the group about that i remember some lady came on just freaking out over nothing yeah. Yeah. Keep your camera on. she's like no she's pissed at you <laughs> yeah uh, but it's like more so those people boss chicks uh boss men higher level individuals they go through life ordering people telling people what to do they never experience this person who is like suddenly boom above them in status quo in this situation mm -hmm. you know and so that's why i i could allude to the fact and i could make them perceive that you know whereas like the younger folk wouldn't really understand that <laughs> yeah i think honestly when people say like b2b and b2c like they probably don't even mean it in the way it actually is they just mean like are you selling like a biz op to complete idiots or are you selling to like not idiots that's yeah. kind of like the way i almost read it um yeah. people was like oh is it like b2b or b2c i'm like well it's like what we a lot of the offers we manage now like the, the investment ones it's like it's technically b2c but like people just by default in order to afford that they need a lot of money and people have a lot of money technically like have a business right and so it's like the lines are blurred just speak to people like you're not an idiot and it doesn't matter if it's b2b or b2c <laughs> Yeah, but like a ton of them don't have a business at all. They're just like retirement folk and they're just like... Yeah, just have a lot of money. Yeah, just having money in a slightly more sophisticated market. But you also get the people who are retarded, retarded, and then you have yeah. to have the patience to like go through shit with them, you know? Yeah, this is true. But speaking, just because it's in my head and maybe it's off topic, but... Um, Speaking of throwing stuff like the kitchen sink out of call, like I was just reviewing one today from a, uh, a student. This is where it comes to like, okay, throwing the kitchen sink just because you think or you're being told this is needed versus listening to what they've just said prior, right? So the guy on this call said, I think it came up naturally and he said, so yeah, like I, I think I'll be ready to go with this kind of thing in three to four months, right? And at that point, the question should be, how have you come to the conclusion of three to four months, right? That could just be pulled out of ass. But it was left, 
right? And then 10 minutes later came the kitchen sink. And one of the questions in the kitchen sink is, so like, why have you decided you want to do this now? Or is it a kick the can down the road for six months type thing, right? And the guy went and I was watching him and he's sophisticated, he's mid fifties, passive income, owns a bunch of real estate. Like that's the person you don't really ask that to, right? Yeah. But he was patient and the guy just went, yeah, I'm ready now. Right. Really shit answer. And they, that it showed like that question literally got you nowhere other than the guy probably thought. Silly question. Right. Mm-hmm. And so it reluded to the fact the relation was. You just threw that in because you thought that type of now question was needed when he'd already told you when he's going to be ready. Yeah. So instead, we don't want to know, is this ready? Are you re- ready now? We want to go. Why in three to four months? And you should have just asked that before, right? Rather than just like letting it go on. And then the now question comes when we know when he's actually going to be ready. So it's like silly question. See what I mean? Yeah, definitely. It's like people just, they have five questions they ask for discovery. They just ask it no matter what people say. And then people will like give them an answer, but they don't even like listen to it. It's like one of the most like foundational like sales script problems ever. It's like they ask the question. They're like, okay, cool. I asked the question. My tonality was good. I ended that question with an upward inflection. And the prospect says something. And they're like, okay, fucking, what's my next question? Looking at the script. And they yeah. just say it verbatim. And then the prospect says something. They just say the next question. And then they don't like pitch any differently or challenge anything or probe anything. And so all of the questions just become superstition, just completely irrelevant. It makes no difference. Yeah. It would be really cool to strip down everyone's script and then start just start building from the most minimal type questions like the close is much more feels way better and you you shorten your call when you ask four questions you on you get what you need and then you pitch i was thinking about this too is like i'm I'm always curious about this especially like the way people pitch i think i talked about this last time like half the time they're selling like lead gen it's like oh i'll get you 30 leads this is how we do it this is how we call whatever so on a biz we have a course we have a community we have a live call it's like, if you knew you couldn't ask any questions at all, how would you pitch? Like, how would you just say, hey, I have like five, 10 minutes, whatever, just explain my offer in a way that like sells people on it. Like have like a logical sales argument. That's enticing. This is why it works. Whatever it is. That would just sell like an X amount of people, like maybe 10% of people just come in, you pitch and they're like, oh, that's really cool. I want to do it. Like the offer, the proof, the price, the guarantee, all that's so in line that you could just pitch people and they'd buy it. Obviously, at that point, you're kind of just like order taken. And so taking it like that, like, oh, hey, my offer itself without any like manipulation, sales, whatever, is appealing. And then you can add in discovery and then like kind of tailor things more toward people and maybe get people kicking the ass with objection handling, whatever it is. But I always find that to be interesting. It's like, what if I just started with just a pitch, made it so appealing people would buy it and then add stuff on? I think it would be a good way of doing it because... um what i see a lot of is tailored discovery like look again the kitchen sink and the pitch comes and the pitch is the same for everyone so now you've got good discovery kind of and a generalized pitch so it doesn't ever hit right and i'm like if you're going to ask all those questions it's because you're using the answers for the pitch right yeah so it it shows the power of a pitch. And if I even think back to a lot of my closers at the time, I'm like, Hey, I fucking killed it with the, with the tonality. Maybe I did this right. did this really well. Actually, if you watch a lot of them, I pitch fucking well. Right. And it's like, I could have maybe just pitched, bro. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. Like the way I always say it to you, I like videos in the course about it is like, all you're really doing with the discovery is like just kind of understanding how to best explain your offer in a way that's most appealing to this person. I think it's that's so easy if you're selling like a B2B service, but like it's a little bit different if you're selling like a like a biz op, for example. But I still think like that's pretty much half the reason why you would ask questions. Otherwise, mm-hmm. if you're just doing like all this fluffy, like asking questions to build scarcity and urgency and stuff like that, like a lot of times it's relevant for people. But um, I don't know. It's interesting. I'm going to try that on an offer. I, I've thought about doing that as well. And you know how you say, like, you become an order taker? Like, yeah. you pitch, and then there's a bunch of questions. 
you just have to like be resilient and like incredibly strong like hey i'm gonna show you what we do i'm gonna explain it all to you and all i'm looking for is a yes or a no yeah like, you can't then pitch and finish and then be like oh we're scared little boy and like well everything objects and fuck you over you just be strong and be like i've explained everything here so like it's a yes or no you know refuse to elaborate or anything no in a way you just don't be rude but like the whole yeah. point of the pitch in that sense is you design it so that it hits on every single point that is within your offer that makes sense that is important so when you do make the pitch it doesn't leave out massive info that they would need right yeah. so they should be at the end going and 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 this is what i say to students your pitch should improve from every call because you get up, you, you collect so much data to know, oh shit, okay, two people have asked me this now. I need to include it in when I pitch. Right? So you should end up with a pitch that's fucking rock solid. And then yeah. you put everyone with it and say yes or no, motherfucker. That's it. Let's <laughs> end it here. And listen, subscribe, like, fucking buy it. <laughs> here we go. Episode 15. Thanks. <laughs>